Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK, and I am born in the UK, Jamaican parents, lived in the United States for 11 years, lived in Africa for one year, and yeah, so I kind of talk about the diff events that affect um, people of those three areas. So today I thought I'll talk about what I heard about what's happening in America. Um, probably some of you know, some of you don't, but um, what's going on in America is that anyone who goes to America, crosses their borders, they are going to be have to give DNA samples. And these DNA samples go straight to the FBI and stay on criminal records. Now, they reckon that when they take these DNA samples, they're only supposed to be the DNA samples for people who are arrested, people who are detained, and people who, um, have, who need to be deported or something. But what they're doing is they're taking um, the DNA samples from everybody coming in just in case they have a criminal record but it goes through the same process that person it still goes on a criminal records bureau and they are holding everybody's dna now and what they're saying is if you refuse um you're going to be held in contempt it's almost a crime to refuse so you don't have any rights and you know they're going to use emotional blackmail even in, especially if you don't know Technically, as long as you haven't got any criminal um, criminal history, you should be able to go in, and you're going into the country legally. You don't have to have a DNA, but you can imagine those border force guards saying, oh, so you don't want a DNA? What have you got to hide then, chummy? I can you imagine it? You must have something to hide why you don't want your DNA sample done. You're not obliged to take it, but... It could have it. It could get. It could lead us to um, suspect to be suspicious. That we can draw inferences from your um, from your refusal. I think it's you know it's getting to the point where we are becoming a totalitarian state. We we don't really have a choice, and it's kind of sneaked up on us, isn't it? It's. It's almost like you get the feeling, one part of you gets the feeling that, oh, it doesn't really matter because, you know, I've got nothing to hide. I've got no criminal records. You know, I haven't done anything wrong. My name, you know, my name, you won't find my name anywhere. And another part of you thinks, hang on a minute, you know, this could actually um, be a part of a bigger um, system. And what they're trying to do is to get everybody's DNA on the database. Whether you whether you are guilty, whether you are innocent, they say they're taking the DNA of American citizens, American legal residents, as well as people coming in and out of the country. Now they're saying it's non-invasive. They just have to have a swab inside the mouse to get some saliva but the fact of the matter is psychologically that's invasive psychologically the person who's being swabbed is thinking god i feel like a criminal what are they going to be doing with that dna supposing they get my sample mixed up with somebody else because these people aren't qualified they're not trained to deal with samples so they could do anything with those dna samples they turn they drop it on the floor and pick it up and put it in the wrong packet and these people are not going to say anything. They make mistakes. They're going to think, oh, you know, I better not tell anybody. And some poor, innocent person could be implicated because of their negligence and because of their fear to own up to what they've done. It's not, it's, it's, it's not nice. Um, I just wanted to read out some so you can get an idea. DNA collection at the US-Canada border is a 90-day pilot. So they say, but you're sure it's going to be extended. Um, the DNA can be taken from anyone from 14 years old to 79 years old. And allegedly it's to find criminals. But how do you know they're criminals if you haven't taken their DNA? So you're going to have to take their DNA first, aren't you, to find out whether or not they're criminals? Not unless you are seeing whether or not you've got them on your database and then if you have 
then taking the DNA. But what is the point of that? If you've got criminals on your database, you might as well send them back to where they came from. Why are you still taking their DNA? So there's something fishy going on there, peeps. Um, so they're taking DNAs from aliens, US citizens, lawful permanent residents. In other words, everyone. Um, what else does it say? Uh, de facto DNA database for everyone. They're keeping a director, a directory of everyone's DNA. So yeah, we're going to become like China. Well, America is at the moment. I don't know. Who knows? UK could be well hot on the heels. We don't know. I mean, I came through the other day. I didn't have to do no DNA, but I don't know. We don't know because if you do have a criminal history or if they do suspect you, we don't know if they take your DNA because unless um, you're, you're a party to that, you, you know, how do we know? There's nobody coming out and telling us what's happening when they're held behind closed doors. So we don't know what the situation is for other people. Um, they reckon DNA genetics cannot be fake. And that's why they want everybody's DNA. But what about this Casper 9 that now they can use? And that's why they don't like it, especially China. They put that guy in jail for how many years? Was it five years? Who um, did the gene, got, um, gene edited babies? He actually was able to edit the DNA and create um, a child with edited DNA so it wouldn't catch the HIV virus. If they can do that, that means the DNA isn't as unique as they say it is. So I don't even know what they're going on about with this DNA. They must need it for another reason because there's too many things out there that can affect a DNA sample. Anyway, what can I say? The information will go to a massive criminal database run by the FBI, where it's going to be held indefinitely. The Department of Homeland Security said US citizens and permanent residents holding a green card who are detained could be subject to DNA testing. But it is not only those who are detained, it is anyone who's crossing the border. And like I said, refusing to submit DNA could lead to a misdemeanor criminal charge. That's what the document says. President Donald Trump's administration announced last year it would seek to expand its use of biometrics to stop migrant adults from bringing children and falsely posing as parents. I can understand that. I can understand that because they're doing that in the UK. You know, we had a, some situations where people brought children over here in the UK, claimed that they were their own children when they weren't. So now, if you're claiming for a child even in the UK, you have to provide a DNA sample at your own expense. And it can cost you anywhere from 300 to 500 pounds because you have to use their DNA centres. So that I can understand. If you're bringing a child into the country, you're claiming that child is your own, I can understand a DNA test being done for that. But I do not understand a DNA test for everybody coming through the border, just because, and just in case. Just in case they're a criminal, we better take their DNA and then we can check it against our database. Apparently, it takes so long to do the test that by the time that the test comes back, these people have either been deported or they've been transferred or they're not even in the country anymore. So what is the point? So DNA data collected to stop criminal activity could instead be used for surveillance. And that is what people are worried about. It's going to become it's going to come like China, you know, because once they have your DNA, love, they can do anything with it and they can create those big old biometric cameras. You won't be able to borrow, you won't be able to do anything because they use the DNA to track you and to track your history and your financial history and what you've been doing for what you haven't been doing. And that reminds me, I really need to go to the tax office because I've been writing to the tax office telling them that my, my, I've got this company that's dormant and they're not acknowledging that I've written to them and I've been writing to them for two years. And the only you can't call them 
and if you or you can call them at, I think it's one pound fifty or whatever it is a, a minute premium premium charges so I'm gonna have to physically go down there and get this sorted that reminds me because next thing I know my name could be on there as a some kind of criminal you don't know little things like that because I don't understand how come they're not responding in no shape or form not even to acknowledge my letters and I've written to them four times and sent a couple of emails yeah I've got to, I've got to remember that actually so saliva swabs and they mailed them to the FBI sometimes people have been oh, I've said that bit so they're going to have a DNA bank of immigrants. The memo said agents will not take DNA from people entering the country illegally or being held for further screening without being placed into detention. But it, but there's no one to stop them. I mean, once they go through, once you go through um, the border, the border force, they can just say, oh, come over here, son. We'd like to take a DNA sample. What can you say? And then they'll say to them, we want to make sure you're not a criminal. But the fact of the matter is it should be the other way around. We've noticed that, you know, your name um, matches with somebody we've got on our records who has been involved in a criminal activity. And therefore, and therefore we need to um, check, have your DNA sample. That's how it should be but they're doing it the other way around. Um, US Immigration and Customs Enforcement, which is currently holding more than 40,000 people in medium and long-term detention, will designate one of its jails for pilot testing. So they're gonna use prisoners as a pilot, a pilot for what? And the thing is, they did this a long time ago. They were doing all kind of um, using prisoners as scapegoats. Remember I said in one of my videos, they're going to have all these prisoners and send them out to war. I've got a funny feeling they're going to do that. But they are talking about they're going to be using the jails for pilot testing. So what are they saying? They're going to get the DNA of every prisoner. They reckon it's in one of the jails, but I bet you it's in all jails. So God forbid any one of those um, people don't want to um, go to war or something. They've got their DNA and they can track them down wherever they are. That might sound a bit far-fetched, but you just don't know, do you? They've had people in prisoners for scapegoats for years and they've been doing all kinds of uh, painful um, things painful practices for science and medical um, innovations and they were using prisoners to practice on as scapegoats. Now they're talking about pilot testing and I don't know what they're going to do with that pilot testing. Anyway they reckon DNA collection will prevent orderly processing of migrants um, border Patrol agents are not currently trained on DNA collection measures, health and safety precautions or the appropriate handling of DNA samples for processing, wrote Brian Hastings, Chief of the Border Patrol's Law Enforcement Directorate. And that's what I'm saying. If they don't know how to handle the um, DNA samples, if they drop them or if they mix them up, if they put the wrong name, what happens then? The Trump administration is planning to expand the collection of DNA from migrants who cross US borders and to include the information in a vast criminal database operated by the FBI. Two senior Homeland Security officials said the Department of Justice was crafting new regulations and details were being discussed in a working group, but it is not known when the plan would be implemented. The practice would allow the government to amass a trove of biometric data on migrants, raising major privacy concerns and question, what privacy? Do we have any privacy? We don't have any privacy. So I don't know who they're kidding. Over whether such data should be compelled, even when a person is not suspected of a crime, other than crossing the border illegally. If they're crossing the border illegally, well, it's justified, isn't it? They're illegal. But I'm talking about legal people coming over. 
and having to give DNA samples. The purpose of DNA collection from one of a criminal investigation to population surveillance. DNA co collection is non-invasive and mostly done through a cheek swab to collect saliva or a piece of hair, but proper collection and sample storing require training. They say it's for migrants who cross the border illegally. They say they're fingerprinted, but everyone is fingerprinted. They have their iris scanned. We don't know if our fingerprints are sent off to a federal database accessible by the state and local law enforcement agency, do we? Do we know that? No, we don't. We just do what we need to do to get into the country, whether it's to visit a friend, whatever the reason is. DNA can be taken if a person has been arrested on federal charges and crossing the border between ports of entry is considered a federal crime. Crossing the border between ports of The thing is, they are looking for potential criminals, so even though they are not on the books, they are taking DNA just in case they are. The FBA's National DNA Index contained more than 17 million profiles from arrestees and other offenders as of August, August, September, October, November, December, January, five months, 17 million. Persons are meant to voluntarily provide a sample and not be coerced or threatened. But... What can you do? Any resistance will be seen as admission of guilt or seen as something sinister. State and federal authorities typically require a conviction or an arrest before a sample is taken, but we don't know who's following the rules. The DNA Fingerprint Act of 2005 allows federal agencies to collect DNA from individuals in their custody, including those who are not American. It's not a requirement and Homeland Security has not vastly collected DNA samples. In 2010, the then Homeland Security Secretary Jan Janet Napolitano directed that people held on administrative proceedings not detained on criminal charges and those facing deportation proceedings would not have their DNA collected. But Trump, of course, has changed that ruling. So, if you want to go to the States, be prepared to have your DNA. And like I said, some people, they'll probably just say, it's okay, I'm not bothered, but I don't fancy opening my mouth and having them take a swap from me. And I ain't a criminal, but I would feel like one if I, if I had to s submit to that. I mean, really and truly, it's just a way of keeping us out. They might, <laughs> really and truly, and really and truly, do you really want to go through that. What is in America or even the UK that you want so badly that you'd subject yourself to such invasive treatment to get in? I, should go get, I guess if you've got children here or family there or whatever, but goodness gracious, they're making it so difficult. I think America should have a hostile, that should be America's hostile environment policy because bloody hell, if that isn't hostile, I don't know what is. Anyway, that's all for now. Bye-bye. Oh, I don't know. This is a new video. So I'm wearing dark glasses because I've got an eye infection and my eye is bloodshot. So, yeah. And I'll probably have it on for a couple of days. That's all. Bye-bye.